Welcome to another episode of GeekOutdoors.com. So on this video, I'm going to be showing you how to use DaVinci Resolve. So this is specifically made for people who are beginners, who are just starting out using DaVinci Resolve, or maybe they're brand new to video editing. And the version that I'm using is DaVinci Resolve 16, specifically 16.1. This is actually the free version, which you could download at DaVinci Resolve or Blackmagic's website. And so whenever you first start out DaVinci Resolve, you're going to have this screen. Uh, this is the project screen. And what I highly recommend you do is go here and show high databases. And the default is going to be local database. I recommend that you create a new database so then you can group all your projects together because the way that DaVinci Resolve works, it's all saved in database. So there's not specifically DaVinci Resolve project files for each project that you create. It's all stored in a database. And so if you're going to be creating a lot of different types of video in specific categories, I think it makes more sense for you to create a new database. So that's the first thing. Now, once that occurs, you're going to go and create your first project, which is untitled project, which I've already done here. So now let me give you an overview of what DaVinci Resolve 16 has to offer. So typically, whenever you start up your project, you're going to be in the cut portion of the program. And so what this allows you to do is quickly edit a video in a more simplified version versus doing it in the edit module. Now, let me go over each one of these because these are going to be very important. And some of these are going to be so complex that they could be an entire program on their own. So let's go ahead and start off with media. So this is where typically you're going to pull in all your media, whether that's video, images or audio. And next up is edit. So edit is where we're going to spend nearly all our time. And this one is basically the more complete version of cut. This has all the features that you're going to need. And if you are really wanting to do video editing for the long term, then I highly recommend that you spend most of your time here versus the cut function, because this is more for uh, simplified ways. And then if you are more of a pro and seasoned professional, you, this is really easy for you to put things together. But if you start off with the more complex version, then things are going to be a lot easier and you're not going to be limited by what features you're able to do here. Next up to that is fusion. Uh, this is where you could do all your special effects. There are a lot of things that this program can do and it in itself can be an entire program. And I would say these other two work very similar to that in terms of like they are full blown separate programs that are all integrated here into one. And then we have our color portion. This is the color grading tool. And this is what DaVinci Resolve is primarily known for. And before they were really just known for this, but now they have this entire suite. So all your color grading is done here. And here we have Fairlight. This will allow you to do all your sound, video editing, and mixing. And then finally, we have Deliver. So once your edit is done, you could come here and then render your video. So those are all the modules within DaVinci Resolve. And I'm going to spend pretty much all my time right here in the edit module. And then in later videos, I'll be going through each of these other modules as well. So now let's go ahead and get all our clips together to create our very first project in DaVinci Resolve. So what you want to do is go here to media and here you're going to go to whatever folder you have all your media stored. So in my case, I have it under a test folder. And so as you can see here, you're going to have thumbnail previews of all your clips. And what you can do is simply put your mouse over the clip and it'll show a preview right there in the window. And you could quickly scrub through all your clips right here, just like so. So that makes things really easy for you to go through the videos and to kind of choose which ones you want. Now, if you ever wanted to have the clip just remain there in the preview window, all you have to do is double click on it and it'll stay right there in the preview window. And then if you move your mouse over to a different clip, it'll show that preview there like normal. And then whenever you mouse off of it, it'll go back to the previous clip. So let's go ahead and choose multiple clips to put in our media pool. And you could do that by holding down the control button and then just choosing the clips that you want to bring in. So here we're just going to choose a few. And I'm going to go ahead and drop them here in the media pool. Now what you'll notice is it's going to ask you if you want to change your current project settings because the clips here have a different frame rate than what you currently have in your timeline. And so I'm going to say don't change. But let me show you where those settings are. So you go up here to file project settings and these are the default settings for this project. The resolution is 1920 by 1080 at 24 frames per second. Now there are other items here, but this is really where you want to focus. 
And so in this case, the clips that I had were at a different resolution in frames per second. Now, a very easy way for you to tell what those things are, you simply go here to your detailed view, and now you'll be able to tell a lot of different information. Most importantly, the overall resolution of each video clip plus the frames per second. So as you can see here, my clips have a variety of different resolutions and also different frames per second. So the reason why this is important is it really determines what project settings you want for your timeline. And so if you want your entire project uh, to be you know, a 2K or 4K resolution, that you wanna be sure that you set that here. Now, whenever you render it out, you can render it at a different resolution. So that's really where you want to make all your changes right here. So if you're happy with whatever settings that you have here, just leave it the way it is. So now that you have all your clips selected, you could either go to the cut module or the edit module. So I'm going to bring it over to the cut module and we're going to quickly go over that to see how that works. So now let's take a look at the cut page. And this overall user interface is fairly simple, especially when compared to the edit tab. So going back here, I'm going to be going over the main features of the cut page and I'll go into more detail in a separate video. And so here things work fairly similar to the media section where you could quickly scrub over each clip. But what you'll notice is nothing shows up in the preview window. Whereas if you go back here to media and you put your mouse over it, you could quickly scrub over your clips. So within cut, you would actually have to double click on the clip you want to add. And now it shows up in the preview window. And here you'll notice there's the video, but there's also the audio and your entire clip right here. So you can choose which portions of the clip you want to bring into your timeline. So you could either do that by dragging it like this have here, or you can use in and out shortcuts. So say you want to start right here, press in, and then right here, press O. And now only this portion of the clip will be available for you. So you could simply drag this down here and now it's in your timeline. And if you wanted to add another clip, it's as easy as you just dragging it right here. And now it's in your timeline. So now let's go over other portions of the cut page. So if you look right here, there's this thing called the boring detector. I'm going to go into more detail in that later. And here we have split clips. So say, for example, your actual playhead was right here. Press this and now it is spliced it between the two. And moving over here, we have things like uh, smart insert. So these are adding clips. Uh, another one is a pen, rip overwrite, close up, place on top, and source overwrite. And as I said earlier, I'll go into more details on this on a separate video. Here we actually have transitions. There's cut, dissolve, smooth cut. And then here we have a fast review. So say for example, you're right here, you want to quickly see how this might look like. Just click on that and it'll kind of like speed up through the entire video where you could quickly see how things might look like. And then here we have other tools. So there is free transform right here, crop, audio, speed, camera, dynamic zoom, and composite. And then if you notice, like there's two different timelines here, okay? So this is the, I would say, master timeline where you could quickly scrub through your entire project very quickly. And if you go down here, you could take a more, I guess, detailed, approach or slower whenever you are scrubbing through your files and here there are thumbnail previews and so if you can see here it's fairly easy to put a video together and say for example you just want to add a transition here here's a transition so fairly easy so this is the cut page uh, there are many other things that you could do here you could choose more transitions titles and effects but I will go over this on a separate video but where we're kind of spending most of our time is in the whole edit portion. So let's go ahead and get into this one. So initially, whenever you're looking at the edit page, it could seem really overwhelming, especially if you've never done any type of video editing before. But for anybody who has, this should be very familiar. So the first thing you want to do is choose the clips that you want to add. And very similar to the media portion, you could simply scrub over the clips that you want. And then whatever you want to add, just go ahead and double click it first. You, then it'll show up here in a preview. And so with the edit page, there's two different previews, one for source clips and then one for your timeline. And so if you want to add a clip, you could just simply drag it down here. And there it goes, you know, uh, very simple, easy to do. But now let's look at the other things that the edit tool offers. So you'll notice something here called the inspector. 
So what the inspector will allow you to do is many more functions. And most of these functions are available here in cut as well, but they're under the tools section. Whereas here, it's going to give you a lot more control. And so some of the things that you could do is composite. So if you want to do any composite, you could do that. So here's the timeline. Here's the source. Um, also, you could do other things like transform, uh, meaning that you could actually resize it, reposition it. And so how you would do that is click here. And now you could do transform, as you can see there. And if you want to reverse what you just did, just go ahead and click here. And it'll go back to what it has before. And if you click on this again, uh, that'll go away. And now you could also zoom as well. I love this. So you could zoom in, zoom out, uh, change the position, the angle. You know, there's other things like anchor points, meaning that the center of it. So if you change the anchor point, the center will be here. And so if you would rotate, it's going to rotate from a different center. There's pitch and yaw. And at the same time, you could also flip things as well. So let me reset everything here. So you could flip it left to right, up and down. So really cool. And then there's also cropping here as well. So you could crop left and right, up and down. So there are a lot of things that you can do here. And say you were to do a lot of these changes and crop and you want to reset everything all at once. You don't have to do it individually. You could just click on here and it'll reset everything. And then there's another thing called dynamic zoom. And all you could do here is you could actually zoom in and out on this entire clip. So if you do this drop down, so the green is where it starts, the red is where it ends. So if you were to do that and then you play, you see, so that's how that works. I'll turn that off and then we'll go back to transform. We'll just double click on it and it'll go away. Other things that it has is stabilization. So if you wanted to stabilize your footage, uh, you could do that as well. There's retime and scaling, and then there's also lens correction. But the majority of times I'm using everything from dynamic zoom and up, and there's also audio as well. So if you did have any audio in your video that came with it, you can adjust that right here. So this is probably the most important portion in my opinion, because that's where you're going to make a lot of changes. There's also a mixer as well. So if you click on mixer now to show audio. So if you would play the video, it'll show up right there. Uh, to make sure your audio is not clipping and so forth. That's great to have. There's also metadata, so information about your video clip. And then as we move over here to the left, here's the master, but there's also things called power bins and smart bins, and I won't really go into this in this video, uh, but it'll really save you a lot of time in the long run. And here we have the toolbox, which is you're going to use a lot. So here you could use your video transitions, audio, titles, generators, effects, um, other effects. Uh, there's also filters, audio effects, and you can also save favorites as well. And so now let's head down over to our project timeline. And so I'm going to be going over some of the main features that I use, but there is a lot going on here, as you can see. So going here, this is your selector right here. And so obviously that allows you to select various clips on your timeline. And then here we have what's called a trim edit mode. Now, right now, whenever you have your clips, you can edit it by either just moving things around like so, or with this uh, trim edit mode, it allows you to do more advanced trimming. Okay. And similarly, there's another thing called dynamic trim mode. And then as we go here, there's this thing called blade. So basically this allows you to do cuts. So if you clicked on it, uh, you could cut anywhere here in your clips. And there's also shortcut keys, which are really helpful. So if you wanted to go back to the selector, you could just press A and now it's back to the selector. You could choose it that way. So as we move over here, we see different edit modes that you can use. This is insert clip. So if you wanted to insert a clip in between these two clips, you could simply use this right here. Uh, there's overwrite clip. Yeah, replace clip and then here we have a snapping tool so what snapping means is if you were to you know put a clip near each other it would snap okay and so if you actually turn that off it won't snap you see what I'm saying so here we also have a link tool so what this means is it'll link both your video and your audio so if we press here now it actually unlink these two things. So now they are separate. Okay. So if you press control, 
and then we'll shift both of these. Uh, you can link these two together or you could link multiple things together. So we'll go ahead and just link these two again. And then here you could actually position lock everything uh, on your tracks or everything on multiple tracks. So if you press this, it'll lock everything. So that means uh, nothing can be edited. Here we actually have flags and you could set that right there. You could also choose different colors. Uh, similarly, there are markers as well. So say you want to add a marker here, different color if you want. Let's say we want to add this marker. On the marker itself, you could put different names for whatever you want. So let's just say first marker. So in case you have multiple things that you want to mark on your timeline or descriptions, you could do that. And also you can remove the marker or remove all markers. So going forward, uh, we have different zoom modes. Uh, there is a full extent zoom. So it'll kind of like zoom out. Uh, this one right here, detail zoom. It'll get in closer to where your playhead is. And then this right here, this is a custom zoom. And here is the zoom tool. So uh, you could always use your scroll wheel on your mouse. You just hold down Alt in Windows. And that allow you to you know zoom in and out. And then if you notice, if you're zoomed out a little too far and you can't really see anything, um, you also adjust the video track height and audio track height. As you can see here, you can adjust that to whatever you know height that you want. And uh, then that way, just things are a lot easier that way. So let's go back here. Going back to this uh, timeline view, uh, there's different audio view options as well. So you can just play around with that. And at the same time, you could also adjust the volume right here within your project timeline. So that's how everything works here. And so um, there's a lot of ways that you could view your projects. And, you know, if you play around with it, there's so many options. You could even uh, change the entire layout of how things look. If you notice here, you can move things around like this. And if for some reason you want to go back to how things were uh, before making all these changes, uh, you could go to workspace and then reset UI layout. And you could also do uh, reset layout presets as well or create uh, new presets. And so it really depends on uh, what you want there, but everything has been reset here. Uh, so that is a general overview of how everything looks like here. And then when you come up here, uh, you could also choose to hide some of the details on the pane, the left pane over here. Uh, and also you could move things up or down to show more details up here as well. And if you click on these other options, these are the effects library, which we just saw earlier. Uh, there's an index. So all your clips and the details that they have. And also if you have a sound library as well. So let's go back to our media pool and effects. I always like to have effects on. So that is the general overview of how uh, things work right here in the edit panel. So now let's go ahead and start editing our video. So the first thing I want to do is just remove all this existing clips, which we'll is kind of start new. And this is going to be a fairly simple first project. Uh, just want to get you used to using this tool uh, now that you are uh, fairly familiar with how things work. So we could just go up here and choose the clips that we want to add. And just like I showed you earlier, you can either just simply drag the whole thing here with the audio and the entire clip. Or you can also choose uh, how much of the clip that you actually want to bring in uh, by setting out in and out points. So we'll do that for a few of these. So I'm going to set an in and out point here. Make things really easy. And so we have about two clips here and I'm going to add a uh, third clip as well. Now there is another way that you can add clips. Say for example, you want to add a clip right in between this, right? And, but you don't want to have to manually move things around. Uh, we can use some of the more special edit options that I showed you earlier. So say for example, you want to add this clip, right? Well, you could drag it right here onto the project timeline and you'll notice there are a variety of options 
and these are the same edit options that you had in the cut page so these are very popular to use so let's use the insert and it'll put it right in between your clips so we go back to the cut page uh, those are the options that were here so here's the insert a pen ripple close up and so forth so those are mimicked right here so that's a really easy way to drop clips in there so now that we have all our clips here let's go ahead and put our project together starting with the most popular thing that people like to use and that is video transitions luckily davinci resolve provides you with a whole bunch of default transitions but the ones that people use the most are the dissolve transitions up here specifically cross dissolve so the way you would use it is you just drag the transition over the clips that you want so it should cross fade into the next clip and the first time it goes in there it might be a little slow uh, depending on your computer as it's rendering it out but there's the cross dissolve and there are a number of things that you can do with this cross dissolve as well if you click on the effect itself and you go to inspector there are a variety of things you could do here uh, there's different styles you can use here um, the ease in and ease out right here and uh, as you're going through this, you just figure out what works best for you. But usually the defaults work good for the majority of people. And at the same time, you could also shorten the transition or extend it. It's really up to you. So it's pretty powerful and obviously makes your videos look a lot better. Now, if you run into a situation where say you added a transition and it doesn't go in between the clips and I'll show you how that looks here. So I'll try to drop this transition, but if you notice, it doesn't go in between the clips that usually means that there's not enough frames in this particular part of the clips in order for the transition to work so how you fix that normally is you would just try to extend the clips uh, or decrease it to see if it's enough frames for the transition to work and if you notice now now it works so you might have to play around with that and it might affect your overall video but that's kind of the solution for that if you run into that problem and other than that, that's how you would add the transitions. Like I said, there are a variety of transitions available. And with Inspector and also Fusion, you could get pretty complex with this. But there's just a general way for you to do a transitions. Now, moving down further, we have audio transitions. So if you wanted to do fades or anything with your audio, you could simply just drag it right here. And it's very similar to the video transitions, except this is going to be audio. And also, you could edit this as well. Just click on it and then go to the Inspector and you could edit the fade transitions now let's move over to titles um, i really do like titles that they make everything look better for the majority of people just simply drop a title transition right here and you could just adjust the text however you want so so right there to whatever font you want you know whatever makes sense for you and then you could also adjust the size uh, and color so obviously you have a lot of flexibility when it comes to this that's definitely not pro uh, but I, I like to do is use the ones that are already default so if you already want ones that are already prepared and done for you you can use these it will take a while for these to render if you do happen and use them so for example if you were to bring down this uh, lower third left lower thirds uh, you just notice that it's right here but it's going to take time for this to render let me put it over something that is a lot easier to see so like there so now you can put whatever you want, you know, and there's a subtitle here as well, but very easy to use. And I really do like these and they have a lot of more advanced ones as well. But the more advanced the animations, the, the longer it's going to take, especially these 3D fusion ones. And uh, I'm going to have to let that render, but normally it's red. And then when it's done, this whole bar will be blue. So as you can see there, there is the blue progress bar because it has to render this whole thing out. And so let me drop this here. You see there? So these are like uh, 3D effects, <laughs> I would say. And so it takes a while for DaVinci Resolve to render this. So once it's rendered out, you could actually check out your brand new 3D titles. I really don't use these because they do require a lot of processing power and it just kind of slows down my workflow. But they're here and they're available and there's quite a few of them. And so uh, you could also edit these as well in the inspector, uh, just like the other title. So I'm going to go ahead and remove this because it does require a lot of uh, power to render that. So that's how you would do the video transitions, audio and titles. 
There's other things here, generators and effects, adjustment clips, which are very important, but I'm really not going to go into this for this very first project. And so as you can see here, this is, you know, the very first project put together. You have a title here, you have a transition. So very simple. You could adjust the audio. You could adjust other little but very important things by going to the inspector. Now let's go ahead and look at some other things uh, whenever you are you know, doing your editing that you know, might make things a little bit easier. If you wanted to say like hold down only a specific part of the clip, like say for example, if you click on something right now, it'll uh, choose the entire thing, okay? But say you just wanted to delete a specific part of it, whether it's the audio or the video, you would simply hold down your Alt key and it'll only select that, you know? So now you could just press delete or backspace and I'll show you the difference between the two. So if I press delete, it'll do what's called a ripple delete. So it'll just move everything over to the left. So I'm going to undo that. But there's another type of delete where it's just backspace. So if I were to choose this right here and then press backspace, you see there's a space there. Whereas if you would click on this and press delete, there's a ripple delete and it'll shift everything over. And so it really depends on what you want to do. For the majority of the times, I like to use backspace because sometimes I don't want it to move my entire project over because it kind of messes everything up in terms of uh, your timeline and everything. So that's normally what I use. And then when you have that space, you could right click, press, uh, you know, ripple delete, or you could just select it and press delete and it'll do the ripple delete. For serious YouTubers, check out TubeBuddy, the premier tool news at geekoutdoors.com. Get more done today by checking out the affiliate link in the description area below. And so those are the main things that you would normally do whenever you are putting your very first project together. Now, some other things you could do to make it a little bit more exciting is to use some of the additional features that DaVinci Resolve has. And I'm going to show you some of those right now. So say, for example, at this clip, I wanted to do a zoom in, right? So you would typically go down here to your inspector and normally dynamic zoom is off. You could turn it on. And if you wanted to get a view of just your timeline, uh, you can use this right here. And now it'll just be the entire uh, timeline window. So now that we have dynamic zoom on, we could actually choose the points in which we want to zoom. So if you go down here, it default is transform. And then there's crop, dynamic zoom, open effects, overlay, and annotations. Choose dynamic zoom and it'll put an overlay. And what you see here is a green box and there's a red box out here. So green box is where it starts. Red box is where it ends. So say, for example, I wanted to start with a zoom in look and it's going to zoom out. And I don't want it to zoom out all the way. So let's go ahead and just zoom out to this point. So now that you have that, we'll go back to the beginning of the clip and we'll go ahead and press play and then it zooms out. So you can have a lot of fun with that. And at the same time, you could reverse it as well. So say, for example, you wanted it to end here, but you want to start with the zoom out. Okay. And then we'll go like right here. So we'll go ahead and press play here. And then it zooms in. So you could have so much fun with that. And a lot of people like using this. And if you wanted to, you know, remove this overlay, you just click on this and the overlay will be gone. And the dynamic zoom affects the whole clip. So you could click on that and to take it out. And so the final thing I want to quickly go over in the edit page is keyframes. So keyframes are extremely powerful in any video editing tool. And thankfully, DaVinci Resolve makes it super easy to use. So if you go here in your inspector, whenever you choose your clip, you see these dots. So these dots represent keyframes that you can set. And so not all of them have it, but the majority of what you need is going to have keyframes available. So transform is the one we're going to use. So let's go ahead and go over to our clip. I'm going to add a keyframe here. And then let's go a little bit further into the clip and we're going to add a different effect here. So what we want to do is zoom in here. And if you notice, if you make any changes to the clip at this point or any other point here, it'll automatically add a keyframe. And once you've done that, you see this arrow that allows you to go between different keyframes in your clip. And so let's go ahead and see how that looks like. So it's going to zoom in. Cool. So now let's add another keyframe here. And I'm going to actually bring this back to what it was before, meaning one. So you could do this easily by double clicking on zoom and now to go back to one, meaning zoom out to where it was before. So see, let's see how that looks like from the beginning. So it's out, zoom in, then it's going to zoom out again. So there's so many things that you could do here uh, with 
keyframes and like I said uh, you know it allows you to do this on a variety of other things like cropping you know or lens correction or even composite but most people they're gonna do it right here and at the same time if you wanted to do these adjustments you know, uh, just manually without having to adjust these numbers you could go over to your clip and uh, here we're gonna choose transform and now it's gonna put a transform overlay over your clip and if you wanted to zoom out you can use your mouse wheel like this or you can use this right here and there's default percentages 25% usually works and here you could adjust the clip however you want you know you, you could rotate it you know, so just have some fun there so I'm gonna go back to fit and let's go back to the beginning of our video and if you want to remove this transform overlay similar to the dynamic zoom just click on this and now you'll notice there's a zoom effect and then zoom out and then the rotate <laughs> yeah fun uh, probably not gonna be the best quality when it comes to your project but you could see you know how you could uh, do that now you could also reset everything go here and it'll reset everything so that makes it super easy for you to go back to how things were so those are the main things that I want to cover over in the edit page so let's assume that this is done you know it's your very first project and now you are ready to deliver on your project and render this out so let's head over to our deliver page and this is pretty much the final point of your video and this is where you're going to choose your render settings you know and so here you'll notice that there are a variety of options out here there is custom which is the default but there's also presets as well so if you're going to be uploading to youtube you could choose the presets for resolution this is at 1080p but you could choose whatever resolution you want and there are a variety of different options here vimeo h264 generic final cut pro premiere so there are a lot of options avid is here as well pro tools so anyway there's a lot of presets but i like to use the custom and then you could also save these custom uh, files as well like i've done here uh, so if you wanted to choose one like for mp4 you choose the format and uh, you know the codec i just leave it h264 choose whatever resolution you want it's going to default to whatever you had in your project settings and the frame breaks and the overall quality and so typically what i like to do is mp4 for the format uh, for the resolution i just leave it to whatever my project has and if you did try to adjust this and change it to something else it could cause problems whenever you are rendering and in terms of quality uh, you could just say automatic best you know if you wanted to restrict it you can but automatic best usually works and everything else I just leave the same I don't really mess with any of these other settings you can't play around with these if you want and then say you wanted to save this presets right you could go up here and then you could save as a new preset you could name it whatever you want and once you do have a preset it'll be available here like this is a preset for me so these are the settings that I normally use so that makes it super easy for you so once you've decided on what preset you want um, and you know every auto settings are to your liking you can render this out so obviously you're gonna have to put a name and then a location so let's just say yeah we'll just put it right there and once you're ready you'll add it to the render queue and if your timeline resolution is different uh, you could change that as well so I think this is different so for my preset let me go back to custom okay so let's do that again okay still have the same issue but that's okay it's just for testing so once you've done that and you're ready you could start render and the great thing about DaVinci Resolve is you could render multiple uh, different projects at the same time at different types of settings so that's really cool that you could do that so now you've completed your very first project in DaVinci Resolve so congratulations and as you could probably tell this can seem very overwhelming especially if you've never done any type of video editing before but once you get used to the overall UI and the main features that it has this is an extremely powerful tool that will grow with you over time so that's it for this very first episode on how to create a project in DaVinci Resolve I'm going to be creating more videos in this in the future so if you want to see more DaVinci Resolve tutorials tips and tricks I do have a playlist I'll leave that in the description area below and if you have any other thoughts on this be sure to leave that in the comments area below as well so as always if you did get value out of these videos be sure to share like and subscribe hey geeks if you are a creative geek like me and you wanted to learn how to create content on youtube and other places on the internet 
then check out my Go Content Creators Group where you get access to additional videos and content for all the creative geeks out there. And the best part of it is, all of this is free. Simply head over to the link below, check out my page, and sign up for my Go Content Creators Group. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the other side.